What's up, weirdo? Shade Tree Surgeon here, about to take the shop truck, the Bangkok bagger, the, oh yeah, that's right, speaking of the fact that it's a shop truck, I got FXR parts sitting in the back of it. I better put my camera over here. Luckily, we have options. As I was saying, taking the Bangkok bagger up to the ride factory right now to ride a much cooler green bike. And it's green, damn it, because I said it was green. A lot of people say they see blue. I gotta ask Shay. She says a girl see more colors. I'm calling it green, because if it wasn't green, how could it attain the title of incredible bulk? I actually put the bike I'm going to make a video on at the ride factory in a video before. It's a Kawasaki ZRX 1200 that uh, sat for a long time. There's nothing really that wrong with it but it sat for a long time and the ride factory brought it back to life completely restored it it's an absolutely gorgeous bike now man i tell you those zrx's are getting hard to find too it's kind of funny because the zrx was just an early version of the a modern classic kind of like uh triumph bonnevilles and hell even the kawasaki's own rs 900 now and of course the Ka and of course the kawasaki w650 and w800 and a, a slew of other modern classic motorcycles and harley davidson of course which has always been modern classics i think harley davidson has been pretty much modern classics since the 80s harley davidson really invented the market of modern classics if harley davidson invented it triumph definitely perfected it although other people were trying to as we pull up here to the riot factory i will tell you that the kawasaki zrx was a very good early example that i felt like never got a fair shake i feel like it should have done better than it did now here's something you definitely don't see every day before we go ride around on that ZRX 1200, a Honda CB750 with a sidecar. Definitely a pretty neat bike, although I'm not really into the sidecar thing myself. Every time I see a bike with a sidecar, all I think is, man, that bike would be a lot cooler without a sidecar. Although it is very, very cool. Anyway, didn't come here to talk about Hondas and sidecars. We came to ride this monster right here. One Kawasaki ZRX 1200, the Eddie Lawson Special. I will tell you, even almost, holy crap, 22 years later? <laughs> 22 years later, even though 22 years ago, I guess it's vintage now. Does that count for vintage now? How can a, a modern classic that's styled after a vintage bike also then itself become vintage? This is getting too meta for me. Let's ride this thing around. The Tim Kreitz Special. Man, you can't talk about a ZRX 1200 without thinking of my man Tim Kreitz over there in West Texas. All right, are you gonna wanna choke? Ooh, yeah, I like the way that feels. This is one reason, as a big dude, I'm six foot one and weigh about 300 pounds, I've always loved the ZRX because this is a physically large motorcycle. This is one of those bikes that, in a world of tiny little pocket rockets that you look like a monkey fucking a football on, <laughs> six one, 300 pounds, I can jump on a ZRX and look just fine. Ooh, Bronco. Cool, we're starting to see those things around. I immediately like it. Boy, I can immediately tell there's a, <laughs> a lot of go juice on tap on this thing. I think they were claimed at like 122 horsepower or something like that. Oh, 
and like something like crazy, like 80 foot pounds of torque. That's what's really neat about these things is man, they got some big torque numbers. I'll tell you, four cylinders is usually my least favorite engine configuration. I'm really a twin man, parallel twin, V twin, it doesn't really matter. Three cylinder bikes like my Rocket 3 take a second place, and then four cylinders are usually last place. Although I might even shove, now that I have my Goldwing, I might even shove six cylinder bikes in between four cylinders. And four cylinders, they're dead last. Oh, I guess single cylinder bikes too. Anyway, I'm getting lost in thought. What I'm saying is, I really like this. Obviously, you're not gonna blow away a new Super Sport or even a new 600, but freaking, you can tell this thing makes 120 horsepower, that's for sure. I like that exhaust on it too, just not loud enough to be annoying, just loud enough to know you got something going on back there. Oh, I get in trouble in this thing real fast, baby. Oh my God, that's the, that's the cool thing about it. So it's a, mo a modern classic, right? But when you say modern classic, you think like, oh, that means you can get away with putting crappy brakes on it and a crappy frame and suspension because you're making up for the fact that it's a modern classic. You're almost like hiding behind it, right? That's what Triumph used to do. They've gotten a lot better, but Triumph and Harley especially were just really bad about going like, oh, it's a modern classic. So we're not gonna put very good brakes on it. We're not gonna spend a lot of time on the frame. It's just gonna be like, hey, you want it to be vintage? So not only is it vintage, but uh, you know, the brakes kind of feel like they're from the 70s and 80s too. Not the case with this thing. I mean, no, it doesn't have a diverted front suspension, but it's got an amazing swing arm, an amazing frame. It handles super, it feels super light and nimble. Like the balance on this bike is great. And it's got six pot calipers up front too. Like if I, I gotta be careful on this thing, I'm used to riding around my Goldwing and Harley Davidson. So uh, <laughs> if I grab enough front brake on this thing, I'm gonna go right over. 4,500 bucks. That's what they're trying to give you. I forgot to say, did I even say it? This bike is for sale. $4,500. You know, they're starting to command a little bit of a premium, like $4,500. I, I think it's worth it. I, As always, every single bike I get, what does it have? 28,000 miles? Every single bike I get on, I'm just like, I want it. Oh, yeah. It's like half throttle, and that front end already feels like it wants to come up. Of course, it's a Kawasaki. Man, I love Kawasaki. Kawasaki's just like such a big green middle finger to everybody. Only Kawasaki could come out with this bright green monstrosity 1200 cc super naked bike like well it's got a little bikini fairing because it's supposed to be the eddie lawson replica but man i especially in 2001 in the early 2000s you couldn't get away with that but kawasaki went ahead and did it anyway which is why these things are actually getting kind of rare and hard to find Oh yeah, that thing stops. There is nothing classic about the brakes and the acceleration on this on this bike, that's for sure. Of course, the Kawasaki Z bikes, like the Z1000 back in the day, those things were always known as widow makers. I mean, everybody made a fast bike, Honda made fast bikes. Oh, maybe Harley didn't back in the 70s and 80s, but <laughs> you knew when you wanted to be dangerous, when you had to have the baddest bike on the block, man, you got a Kawasaki. They had a rep, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, that's the cool thing too because like when you think modern classic when you think harley davidson or triumph you also think slow <laughs> this thing ain't slow i mean even a new triumph thruxton i'm pretty sure that this 2001 motorcycle which is also styled after a motorcycle from the 70s this bike would put a, a brand new triumph thruxton r's dick in the freaking dirt dude no competition whatsoever that's pretty wild to think about man Oh, real quick, baby. Wild to think about a 22-year-old motorcycle that's also supposed to be a modern classic could take a 2021 modern classic and absolutely destroy it. I guess that's the advantage of your heritage being in four-cylinder engines. Like, yeah, this thing sounds good. It handles good. I don't think it's gonna handle as good as a brand new Triumph Thruxton R. Those things have some pretty wicked suspension on them, but acceleration-wise, no comparison. I'll also say that this bike is not perfect, but for $4,500, I mean, that's still a pretty good deal for any motorcycle, really. I would definitely say that this is not concourse, okay? <laughs> this is this is a rider, but it's on the top as far as how nice it is. Like it would have what I say, what I would call like some shelf wear. A couple, <laughs> a nice stop sign, buddy. It has a couple of uh, faded parts just from use and stuff like that. It does have 28,000 miles on it. This is not a showroom bike, but it's definitely a bike that you wouldn't feel bad about getting out there and riding. And come on, man, I'm all I'm all for bikes being preserved in a museum, but at the end of the day. 
they were made to ride, baby. You almost like it better that way. Like if this bike was just absolutely insane concourse classic, uh, even if I had the money and it was, cause obviously it'd be more expensive if it was, looked like it still came out of the showroom with a sticker on it and stuff. Uh, I don't even know if I'd want it. I don't even think I'd want to buy it. Even if I, even if I could afford it because I like riding motorcycles. I don't need something that, I, that I'm it's like, this is too nice to ride. I've already been through that with bikes. <laughs> if I, if I bought a classic bike, one that's going to appreciate in value, as this one is i wouldn't even want to sit around on it i want to be like nope i'm gonna beat the dog piss out of this thing and i'm pretty sure you could put a slug from a 45 in this engine and it'd still be able to make it to the next gas station these old 1200s are stout <laughs> all sorts of weirdness on two wheels right now buddy i love it my man going to do some work <laughs> i really want to buy it but i need another motorcycle like i need a hole in the head okay although i uh, you know i don't have any four-cylinder bikes it'd be kind of nice to have something it's a that's the one configuration i don't own i can't i mustn't i mustn't after all why shouldn't i have it after all why not why shouldn't i keep it no, I can't. Resist! Resist, damn you! All right, I gotta park this thing before I take it home. <laughs> I'm just already making the excuses in my head, already being like, I don't have a four-cylinder bike. The only Kawasaki I have is a KX100. I'd really like to have two Kawasaki's. That would be nice. Get off the bike! Somebody else buy this, please. Like, soon. <laughs> for 4500 bucks. as I said. It's just a good bike for 4500 bucks. let alone, like, the heritage and the classic that this thing re represents. Really, really is just a Korean value on its own and getting more rare just all in and of itself despite already representing something that's rare and desirable which i think is a pretty cool dichotomy all right back on a honda goldwing where it's safe for my wallet as i said 4500 bucks uh, zrx 1200 could be yours that's a hell of a bike i'm tempted but i can't i mustn't if you are interested in it though i'll have all the right factories contact info listed down below this video is coming out sunday so they won't be open till monday but you can email them you can call them they do ship too so even if you don't live here they can get it to you man it's gonna make somebody a hell of a machine that's for sure somebody with an instagram or, or a youtube channel please buy that because i really i ended up liking that bike so much i want to keep up with it so whoever buys it i really want to be like all right post a picture of it every once in a while so i can check in on it and see what you're doing with it when modern classics become classics themselves what a freaking thing man <laughs> it's just really really wild that something that, that i mean it's not quite there i think 30 years is actually the definition of of classic at this point but man we're rolling right up on it that's for sure just crazy when stuff that's 30 years old even can have just uh, stuff that's still considered almost top of the line now which is really kind of a spit in the eye of <laughs> triumph and harley davidson for putting such substandard brakes and such substandard and do and not making their bikes super fast for so long even though you currently can make them very fast they're kind of like legos in that way you can make a harley davidson as fast as you want and you can make a triumph as fast as you want too it just depends on how deep your pockets go but there you go kawasaki was doing that in the 90s i think the first year that bike was like 98 or something like that and uh maybe triumph and harley had the right of it because the zrx isn't around anymore and the bonneville is going strong for me at least i'm gonna go ahead and stick to gold wings when it comes to japanese multi-cylinder motorcycles for right now short episode today that's gonna about do it for this one hope you guys enjoyed it don't forget to just like subscribe leave me a comment on the video let me know if you ever owned a zrx 1200 or if you owned a z1000 the bike that it's modeled after and till next time y'all keep it weird